Well, everybody left Raphael, so. Sorry. It's not your fault. We could go back and look at the questions from the old one, but um, first people that pop in, there's only two of you. If you ask your question now, you, it will definitely be answered. Now there's 29. Okay, um, we don't have access to the questions that were already typed, that's easy. So Cyrus asked, is it possible to ask the judge to order USCIS to issue our green cards as we have already paid the fees and enable us to use them for entry after March 31st, even if the visas expire? Is this a logical solution? Actually, no, the law, the, the law makes um, visa issuance and entry two different things. You cannot be issued a green card before, you're, um, before you officially have entry into the United States. They're not going to issue green cards to people that have not done entry. That would violate federal law. I like that you're thinking outside the box, but that doesn't work. Rafael, do you want to get one or? Yeah, I'm just sharing this to my page really quickly. And then what is Dimitri asked? What is going to be if one of the named plaintiffs will not get an interview appointment for an interview? A new lawsuit? The answer is no. You can't bring the same lawsuit for a different judge and expect that um, you just can't do that. Um, I, I see what you're saying. It wouldn't be the same lawsuit. It would be slightly different. But the, but the thing is, it is the same. What we're trying to do is get you the interview. So um, if the judge issues an order that says everybody gets an interview, you can look at the young case to see how that plays out. If there are people that aren't getting an interview, they have to explain to the judge why that is. We don't disappear. We're not going to abandon our clients until it's you have every viable opportunity to get an interview. Okay. Raheem asked, what about DB 2020 and the Muslim ban? Um, the first video, we talked about that a little bit. We expect that the Muslim ban will be gone 9645 on January 20th because that's what Biden says he will do. Um, so we don't expect that's going to be a problem at all. Sarah says, do you think Jacob v. Trump case will be heard? Just asking when you expect it. Um, it's been assigned to one judge, Judge Donata. I haven't checked the docket today to see if it's been transferred or if it's still with him. Still too early to tell. I mean, we're hoping for a hearing in um, February. Um, and, and that's all we can say right now on that. Elada says, is there any case open for DB 2021? There was um, the Jacob case. We followed it Monday. It's too late to participate in that now. Continue to follow our Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, YouTube channels, and we make announcements about new opportunities in all those places. Okay. If we get a TRO, then immediately we pl we plaintiffs get visas. Some plaintiffs probably will get visas very quickly. If you had been um, interviewed already. Uh, and the only impediment is the proclamation you should be adjudicated and issued a visa very quickly. Now, for diversity visa 2020 or 2021, uh, that's probably not the case. One, because DV 2020 can't be issued after the at expiration of the physical year. So if we get a TRO in Young, uh, that won't help you. And if you get a, if you're a DV 2021, uh, it's extremely unlikely that you've been interviewed. So you would still have to be scheduled for an interview and uh, issued a visa so you won't get it immediately um so it's just short answer for dv 2020s it uh, dv 2020 or dv 2021 is no you will not be issued a visa immediately <clears throat> i see where somebody asked should i pay the green green card fees now um i don't know your exact situation but if you're a dv 2020 client which is what this facebook live is supposed to be for um we well actually this is true for everybody you want to pay your green card fees before you enter the u.s not after because you're going to create a delay if you pay them after however um if you don't even have a um a plan to travel i wouldn't pay them yet let's wait until you have a plan to travel because you don't want to give the u.s money that just for fun and let's wait till you have a plan for travel then pay them 
Correct. I would I agree with um, Curtis. And I think I um, uh, would agree that it's just pointless to pay that green card fee before you went, before you have plans to enter. You can literally do it the day before you enter the United States. Uh, and even if you hadn't got it done, I um, mean, let's just say you had to pick up your bag and run to the United States, you can do it after entry. And although it will cause a delay, at least you won't lose out on your money if you are really counting on that money to get your life started here in the United States. Um, I was I was going to tell the Jacob v. Trump plaintiffs that this Facebook Live this morning is for DB 2020, um, but but a lot of the questions are the same question. If you, if you have a if you if you saw a mistake in the complaint or your name's not there and you don't know why, um, refer to the email that we sent you on instructions to contact Philip. Or um, if you didn't get that email, contact me via email. Okay. What happens? Uh, I didn't get the interview date yet. I need more context. First of all, no, no DV 2020s are getting interviews right now. We have to wait. This is probably a Project Voyager uh, client. You have to wait until we win the litigation or we get um, a path through Congress to where the processing and the issuance resumes. And that's not going to happen before April, okay? So, so you need to be patient. Um, do not bother me. Do not bother the embassy. We're working on it. Um, can we please talk about prioritization of plaintiffs. Andres, everybody wants to know that question, but until, we are working on it, okay? We're working on it through the brief. Uh, you know, we share these filings a lot of times, and people don't actually read them, and I understand why, because they're legalese language. It's really complicated to understand. Um, but that's actually how we're working on that, and we won't have an answer. We can't tell you whether or not it's going to happen until the judge issues his order, the State Department interprets that order, and then the State Department implements that order, and then we can tell you what's happening. Okay, so we're going to need you to be patient until we go through that process to, to have the answer to that question. You're asking the answer to the final question. I have a question. There yet. question. Okay. Those who have issued visas in September, and hopefully if they get the opportunity to travel with current visa till March, but the police certificate is going to pass more than one year, are they required to get a new police certificate? No. Your police certificate only has to be valid on the day of issuance of the visa. This is the issue I had with the United States Embassy in Sydney that was trying to tie the validity period of the visa to the validity period of the police certificate, which is not the correct policy or the interpretation of the law. It only has to be valid on the day of the issuance of the visa, and then you don't have to worry about the police certificate at all. So police certificates are only something individuals who have not been issued a visa have to worry about. I knew ask a question that we actually answered in the earlier one too. Um, if you were not issued uh, 2020 DV in September uh, because it was put on medical hold, um, how's that gonna work out? when visa processing resumes for the 9,095, it could be a problem. And we are looking at ways to um, try to fix that problem in advance, but we don't have it right now. Um, what I would say though, is make sure that um, you are prepared to move as fast as possible because um, you already have a built-in delay if you're gonna have an extended medical exam again, because medical exams are only good for six months. So if it's if you're going to have to go through that same process again, you're going to be at a disadvantage. So make sure that uh, when processing resumes, you're ready to go and you don't cause any delay for yourself. That's what I'm saying. I don't want any of our clients ever to cause a delay for themselves. Okay. We have a question from Todd. Do you think we have a good chance at a temporary restraining order? I mean, it's been denied repeatedly so far. I think we do have a good chance of the temporary restraining order in Jacob if we can get back before Judge Chen. If Judge Chen says this is a related case to on, a, on an issue that he's already determined, he's in, may be inclined to issue the temporary restraining order because he's heard the arguments from the government and from our side already, and he may, me, may feel more comfortable that a temporary restraining order on an emergency basis is, um, is valid or justified. Um, Shady. He asked, if Biden revoked the proclamation, 
do you think the whole 35,000 visas will be issued and Proclamation 10014 may be considered as it wasn't? Um, so we would go back in time. Um, the answer is no, not just if Biden revokes the proclamation. Um, the president is not who allocates the number of visas that are issued every year. Congress does. And those 35 expired on September, 35,000 expired on September 30th with the possibility of the 9,000 not expiring because Judge Mehta put them on that. Only Congress and federal judges sitting in courts of equity can, um, can solve this problem. A president cannot solve this problem. Okay. So. Uh, do, I have a question. Do you think Kennedy plaintiffs have a good shot to get uh, one of the 9,095 visas? And if yes, why do you think so? One, I think you do have a good chance because um, Kennedy plaintiffs will have Curtis and I advocating on their behalf uh, for them to get visas within the briefing of the on uh, before Judge Meadows. So we're going to be having a specific section about relief and about why Kennedy plaintiffs should have um, be given the opportunity to have a full and fair adjudication of their visas. Um, secondly, you're going to have a team of six attorneys, I think at this point, maybe more by the time we get there, that are working specifically on your behalf to get that visa adjudicated. This puts you at a much better position to have six attorneys who are um, well-versed in diversity visa and consular processing, advocating on your behalf, preparing you for interviews, preparing, uh, content, communicating with embassies to get you one of those 9,095 visas. And then thirdly, we have Project Voyager who is trying to allocate more visas for diversity visa DV 2021 that which will benefit Kennedy plaintiffs. So yes, I do think you will have a good chance of getting a visa if you're a Kennedy plaintiff who has not been issued a visa at this point. Um, Alexandra pays a lot of attention because um, she has asked if we monitor the HEROES Act because there's a paragraph about DV 20 and 21, what do you think about the probability to move DV 2020 cases to 21 and 22? We know that there's a paragraph. We paid for that. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're the ones lobbying Congress to get that language in there. Not AILA, not any of the other immigration attorneys. We have absorbed that cost and our Project Voyager clients have made it possible that we get to continue that. The problem is, let's not talk a lot about that paragraph because that paragraph can go in and out every day and it can change. And, let it, and so, um, just know that we are lobbying Congress, and um, I'm impressed that you found that. Um, Tell us, so how does it work with changing judges? Do you request it, or does the court review if there's a related case? We submit something called a civil cover sheet when you file a complaint. On that civil cover sheet, there's a section called not uh, related cases. You put the notice of a related case there, and then the courts themselves review the relation of the cases and make a determination of whether it should be randomly assigned to a judge, which it already has. Um, and if that random assignment uh, should then be disposed of, then it should be go to the related case, the, to the other judge who already has that related case. So they're in the process of making those determinations. We may file a notice of related case later on today. We have to make a full determination of whether we'll do that just to bring it, clear, make it clear why these cases are related um, and why it should go back to Judge Chen. Good question. Michael asked, do you think CDC signing off on the new travel corridors um, is Biden's doing? Um, no, I don't think Biden has any influence over the U.S. federal government right now. Um, but I do think that your second part of your question, um, uh, may that be the official travel plan for the 26th, um, I think that that's um, very possible because it's more rational. It makes more sense than the current. Schengen ban never made sense to me. Um, and, and actually the other, other regional bands like Brazil and Iran, like um, the, the, those regional bands said that you can't come from these countries to the U.S. Um, unless you spend 14 days outside of them. Well, okay, people did. Um, it, it just, it, it didn't make sense to me. So, so it would not surprise me if Biden does a new thing that's just his. Right. Uh um, and I think they're 
the CDC is already gearing up to implement a new type of uh, COVID protection plan in the sense that they're asking for uh, negative COVID results because we really know this is a global pandemic. So just focusing um, on one area just really isn't right because we know Mexico has COVID. We know um, other countries in South America besides Brazil have COVID. So just saying these countries, you can go to um, leave Brazil, go to Argentina and spend 14 days there and then enter the United States. This really doesn't make sense. So I think Curtis is right that we'll see a new sort of protection plan for international travelers um, be implemented beyond uh, these regional proclamations that Trump has issued. Um, he's kind of relied in, entirely on his um, State Department guidance on 212F, so I think that's the only thing he knows how to use. I have a question here. Uh, I contacted IOM that does medical. My medical is clear and is at the United States Embassy in Camp Ben Do at least what they told me. What suggestions would you give me now? Will still cause me problem if my medical has been cleared now? Um, yes, but your medical can expire. So uh, I would just pay attention to the validity period of your medical examination and make sure that's uh, valid um, or you can redo the medical examination as soon as possible um, if that were to expire. So just pay attention to the validity period. It's six months. Um, uh, and you may have to redo it anyways if you, if you want to have a longer validity period of your visa. Um, so just pay attention to that. Mabel ask how many weeks or months does it take to have a hearing date? Uh, Mabel, I'm not sure which case you're asking about, um, but, but generally hearing dates are not on a case. They're on a specific motion, okay? So in the Mohammed, Songjong, and Kennedy cases, the DV 2020 cases before Judge Mehta, um, the only chance for a hearing date would be a hearing on the motion for summary judgment because that's what we have. That's the only thing stopping us from wrapping that case up. There's also, uh, we could have a status conference, but there's no other outstanding motions. Um, so, so we expect if there is a hearing in Muhammad Fung, John Kennedy, Gomez, Baker, that that would be um, at the end of March. But um, um, if you're talking about the Jacob case, it's going to be um, February. It's going to be in February is, is what we hope for. Are you still there, Raphael? Yes, I am. Um, we're going to, uh, I'm going to step off. I have, we have to um, address some things. Um, okay. Uh, uh, speak to you guys okay. later. I'll, I'll answer a couple more questions if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, Alexander says, do you have a real example of lucky ones who successfully entered on January 1st? Is everything okay with them? Are there any problems with their docs? Um, I, I appreciate that you're empathetic with their situation, but they're actually in a really good situation. So um, there's no problem with their docs. Um, as Raphael pointed out in his tweet, there's this remote possibility that someday some um, rogue um, immigration official might figure out the connection, but I just don't think that that's, that's really going to happen. Um, so um, they're moving on with their lives, and they actually worry more about the ones left behind that didn't successfully enter on January 1st. And also, there are not only examples of people that successfully entered, but people who went through hell that day, who were detained and returned back to actually third countries that they didn't travel from. And so um, if you didn't, if you canceled your travel plans, if you were issued DB 2020 and you canceled your travel plans, it was probably for the best because things were either really worked out or they w went really bad. And um, so, so, so I said really bad, but everybody's at the same place that they were. If you were returned that day or you were turned away at the airport, you're still in the same place. You're still going to be able to, um, do a successful entry once um, the proclamation is enjoined. Um, let me see here. If Biden revokes the proclamation, do you think that DV 2021 will continue normal? And on your opinion, what's the maximum case number that will make it through? 
Um, I do think that the EV 2021 processing will resume. I don't think normal because we're in the middle of a pandemic. So that there are people at a, a disadvantage because of this pandemic, like Egypt, Egypt, big bunch of the DVs are in Egypt and the Cairo embassy says that COVID is the reason that they're closed. So they're at a disadvantage until, um, until that embassy reopens. So the maximum case number, I mean, that's impossible to predict. Um, when there's all these different factors like litigation and pandemic. Um, if you want to go and get predictions on case numbers based on a normal year, Britt Simon's videos and his guidance, um, even though he's not an attorney, he is the expert on that. Um, I, I, I recommend that if you want to understand where you are with respect to your case number on a normal year, that's who you go to. But even Britt cannot predict the impact of COVID pandemic these new travel restrictions are litigation from multiple cases. So, um, oh, thank you for your niceness. Um, of course, it's somebody from Albania. Everyone from Albania is so nice. I, I don't understand it. I'm looking for the one mean person from Albania. I haven't found that person yet. Um, thank you for your kindness. Somebody said, what about the Sudanese who get their interview refused because of 9645? Can they get their visa if the ban is canceled? Um, I'm glad you asked that question because we have a lot of Sudanese plaintiffs on the um, Kennedy case, DV 2020 selectees. Um, and we expect that once Biden cancels that proclamation, then that barrier to entry will actually be removed. And so that will no longer be um, something you have to worry about. So, so you do still have a chance. Please still keep hope alive. Um, and someone is now, the gardeners are here mowing my yard. So that's going to make some noise. So I might just wrap this up. I'm going to see if there's one more question because it's hard to, to just leave questions there. Um, if we get TRO, Oh, then immediately we will get visas. No, Caleb, nothing is immediate in immigration. Um, we got a motion for preliminary injunction on December 11th in our young case. And so far only um, less, well, about half of the plaintiffs, 181 families in that case have either been issued visas or have interviews set. And the State Department is still trying to figure out how to implement the order and get the other half set. Um, a month out, and, and part of that's because they're not really exercising good faith efforts to the standard that we would expect them to, but also COVID is a factor. So um, the answer is no, it's not immediate, but it's sooner than the people that do not have that relief, if that makes sense. So so uh, usually takes the State Department um, three to four weeks to effectively implement an order. Um, what is my forecast, how will 9,095 visas be distributed? Will the plaintiffs have priority? I'm asked this question maybe 50 times a day, and this is the point of the litigation, okay? We will find out when Judge Mehta issues his final order in um, um, the end of March, okay? We can't tell you how the State Department's going to interpret that order until the end of March. So you have to wait like everybody else can't answer a question until I have the information. So since my yard is being mowed and Raphael is gone, I want to go ahead and call it an end to the Facebook Live today. Thank you for putting up with our technology problems. And remember to drink water. Actually, you could drink coffee too, but also drink water see, and, and breathe air. Very important that you don't let the anxiety of this um, chaos bring you down, take years off your life. You have to relax. You have to continue to to take care of yourself. Um, so have a good day, and we will do one of these again uh, when we have more information.